Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com, and today we're going to keep talking about using Strokes Plus to do gestures in Photoshop. So what are we looking at here? Well, this is sort of the anatomy of how a gesture comes to life, and it's really a lot more straightforward than it looks, so follow along here. This, two lines of code, that's the whole script. Two steps in Photoshop, very simple. Well, here's how this works in Strokes Plus. The first line of code, AC send keys, that little carrot there means control V, followed by the second line, which is control T. So that's paste and then free transform. Now, what are these green things down here? Well, all this is, is my commented out code that just reminds me what these stupid little commands are because I was always forgetting them. So this is ignored. The green stuff is ignored. These two lines of code are what define my gesture. Now, the shape itself is this right here. And you can see that this is my down gesture and that none of the modifiers are checked. If I wanted to have another one that also shared the down gesture within Photoshop, I could do that. I would just need to make sure to have either left or maybe right click held down while I did it. So a neat thing worth looking at here is that these are just my Photoshop gestures, but I have them for other software too. Strokes Plus is aware of what software I'm currently using. So what it'll do is first check what software am I using, and then I deliver my gesture and it says, ah, in Photoshop, down means paste and then free transform. But in my internet browser, the down gesture actually means just normal paste, control V. So from a technical standpoint, I'm ready to go. There's a lot of power here, but now I have to start thinking about what's my strategy. If I were so inclined, I could make a gesture that was very complicated. Let's say I wanted it to be a cursive V followed by a C or an E. It could read that. That could be a gesture as far as Strokes Plus is concerned, but clearly that's going to be a huge pain in actual practice. So what I have found out works the best personally is to limit myself to eight directions. That's it. I have the compass directions and the diagonals, which gives me eight commands per software. Well, eight's not quite enough. So instead what I have is eight commands with the addition of modifiers. So either the right button held down or the left button, which is the stylus tip, that gives me 24 commands. Now that's pretty good. At that point, combined with the G13 I use on my left hand, that's great. What that does is it essentially turns one button on the G13, the one that listens for gestures, into a possible 24 commands. So that's a huge efficiency. So the next part of the strategy becomes, well, if you're gonna use this across multiple softwares, what could you keep in common? Like for instance, copy and paste. That's something I do all the time in a lot of different softwares. So what I have for that is up and down. The gesture up is generally copy for me and I have certain variations in Photoshop because there's multiple ways to copy. And then down is paste. And that's something that works in Windows Explorer for me. It works in the internet browser, really any of the software I'm commonly using. And my next strategy is to think about common commands. So for instance, I have levels, which is an adjustment, and then I have hue saturation. Those are sort of categorically similar. So I've bound those both to the down right gesture. It's really pretty straightforward. I have the ones that are the highest priority, the ones I use the most, have no modifiers. The ones that I use less have more modifiers. So for instance, I have deselect as up left. So you're sort of getting rid of a selection, if you want to think of it that way. Well, I have the second version of the up left gesture as delete, because in my mind, those are sort of categorically similar. You have get rid of a selection or get rid of a layer, but I do delete a little bit less. So I have that one bound to a modifier. So clearly there's a learning curve here. It's not going to be automatic that you start making gestures today and you're painting twice as fast. But what I found after doing this for months and months is that it just feels good. It actually feels better in some respects than keyboard shortcuts because you're just flicking your wrist a tiny bit. It's almost like manipulating an instrument. You have this kind of connection with the computer in a way that I haven't felt before. So trust me on this one, it's worth experimenting with. So I hope you download Strokes Plus and make some gestures, and I think you'll be happy you did. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.